Hey there. In a few minutes, I'm going to cover aircraft wing configurations. Now, when I say wings, what do I mean? One set of wings? Where do I put them? Will this work? How about this? Okay, clearly not. All right, all right, all right. When looking at wings, specifically the basics of wings, we'll answer three questions. How many, where, and what kind? I'll also tell you how to stay safe from terrifying things like angle, sweep, and aspect ratio. Okay, let's start. If you ask me, hey, how many wings, I'll probably say, well, how many would you like? And while hilarious, it's actually true. Start with the simplest, a monoplane, which has one set of wings like the Spitfire. Add another set and you get something like the Boeing Stearman, which is a biplane and totally not a member of the gay community. Add a third set and you have a triplane, like the Fokker DR-1. Add yet another and you get a quadruplane, like the Besson H-5. And since this is the limit of my patients with cardinal numbers, the rest are simply called multiplanes, like the Fokker V8 with five wings, the Caproni Transero with nine wings, and I can't really tell if it's helping or hurting the design, or the Philips Multiplane 2 with a hundred, yes, a hundred wings, making it more like the Multiplane 100. Let's move on to the wear part. And no, not that kind of wear, but this kind of wear. You can pretty much put the wings wherever you like. At the lowest point of the fuselage would make it a low wing aircraft. And these give it good visibility, good stability, are light, and have a good float because of a hard to explain phenomena called ground effect. And because of these good things, most airliners are low winged aircraft. Raise the wings a little bit and like the Dassault Rafael, it becomes a mid-wing aircraft, which gives it the least possible drag of all positions and also gets easy to maneuver. However, as you can see, it goes right through the middle of the fuselage, which is a problem for airliners but not for fighters. Raise the wings a little bit more and you get the typical high wing like most of Cessna's inventory. This position also gives it good visibility and stability and good ground clearance, which is suitable for small general aviation and more importantly trainer aircraft when you don't want to hit anything on the ground. The only way to raise the wings even more is to literally hoist them above the aircraft. As you can guess, it will make it very hard for you because of the excess drag, but the guys at Pinta Paul tried it anyway for the air camper. Why is it called the air camper? Am I supposed to sleep in there while flying? Who knows, but that takes care of the wear part and we can move on to other things. Other things like what kind of wings and you're going to say, duh, well these kind of wings. Well, okay, smart answer, but more precisely, we're looking at wing geometry, like size and shape of the wings. Let's start with size and the first thing is aspect ratio, which is the wing span divided by the length of the cord, which is the straight line distance between the leading edge and the trailing edge of the wing. Even though mathematically you can have any number for aspect ratio, most aircraft fall within two major categories. A high aspect ratio, which is when the span is long compared to the cord and the aircraft looks like this, and a low aspect ratio when the cord is longer than the span and it looks like this. High aspect ratio wings are very stable and have very low drag, but because of that long span come with a weight penalty. These are common with most wide body heavy lift aircraft today. Whereas low aspect ratio wings are very maneuverable and can be made to be quite lightweight. So these are popular with a certain type of aircraft as you can see. Now that pretty much takes care of the size aspect. As for the shape, that's a whole different story. First, let me tell you about sweep. No, not that kind of sweep, this kind of sweep. See this aircraft over here? See how its wings are swept backwards? That's the kind of sweep I'm talking about. Wing sweep is awesome for two reasons. One, it lowers the drag at high speeds, and two, it gives very good lateral or sideways stability. And yes, most of the aircraft you've seen so far have wings swept backwards, but it doesn't always have to be that way. In the beginning, most aircraft had no sweep as you can see here, but then we got clever and said, hey, backward sweep is cool like these airliners over here. But then we got even cleverer and said, what if we can change the sweep mid-flight from this to this? And that's possible too and has been done in several aircraft like the Mirage, the Aardvark, the Tomcat, and my favorite, the Panavia Tornado. But wing sweep does not always have to be backwards. They can also be swept forwards. And although this has limited effects compared to the backward sweep, it has been tried multiple times, most recently by the V-22 Austin. Now we can move on to taper, which is changing the shape of the wings from the inside like this. This one is straight or constant cord. This one is tapered from the root to the tip. This one is backwards, so reverse tapered. And this one only has the outer section tapered. This one has many angles, so it is compound tapered. One last thing about the shape is that there are three more types. The elliptical like the Spitfire here, the delta wing like the Arrow Arrow, and there are aircraft with canard, which are really not wings, but more like stabilizers and elevators placed in front of the wings instead of behind like the Saab Gripen. Now we move on to the last thing about shape, the angle of the wings. And again, there can be three types of angles that wings can take straight, obviously with no angle at all, a dihedral which is a positive angle, and an anhedral which is a downwards or negative angle. An easy way to remember all this is that anhedral has an N for negative in it, whereas there is no N in dihedral. 
Trust me, I've checked. Now what's the point with these angles? Well, the dihedral gives very good turn stability and is perfect for heavy lifting aircraft like airliners and transports, this antenna being the major exception. Anhedral on the other hand makes for superb turning agility and is therefore good for a certain type of aircraft as you can see. Okay, I'll stop being all cloak and dagger. Fighters is good for fighter aircraft. That brings the video to a close. Thanks to these guys for the pictures I've used here. Thanks to you for watching this video. As always, comment, subscribe, and suggest your ideas. Ta-da!